Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome back to another video. Um, today, I've got some pretty big news to share with you all in regards to my application to join the British Army. I've actually got three pieces of news, um, so yeah, let's get right into it, shall we? In fact, I was a little bit hasty there. I kind of just want to roll it back just a tad because I've been running the channel now for a number of months, and I just want to say a big thank you to everybody that has watched the video, liked or commented on a video, subscribed to the channel, okay? Um, it's It's been pretty cool, actually. I've now got, I mean, this isn't like a huge YouTube milestone or anything like that, but I've now got three videos on the channel that have more than 250 views, which for me is a win, all right? I didn't start the channel to become a YouTuber, okay? I started the channel to um, vlog my progress as I try and join the British Army, um, and but the fact that, you know, hundreds of you, literally hundreds of you, are tuning in and following this journey with me. Um, it, it's quite nice. So thank you very much if you've watched the video, um, liked, sub commented, and of course, subscribed. Now what I will say on the subscriber front is according to YouTube analytics, um, something like 83% of my views, or the views that I have in, in, as a collective on the channel, are from non-subscribed uh, individuals. So, um, I, I don't really know how to take that. <laughs> um, I suppose really you shouldn't really take it too seriously or look into it too, you know, uh, in the details of it. But if you are one of those individuals that kind of have watched, um, watched a video of mine in the past, or whether this is, might be your first time, I don't know. Um, feel free, you know, just um, basically, if you subscribe, you get to follow me as I, you know, on my military journey, so to speak, and there's no guarantee that it's gonna end with a smile and a happy ending. So if that don't make you wanna subscribe, I don't know what will. Okay, the rambling and the pleasantries um, over. Let's get into the meat of today's video. Now, as I mentioned right at the beginning, I have three pieces of big news. So those of you that have um, followed and watched my content will know that this last year I returned to school or college to redo my maths and English GCSE uh, in order to um, be eligible for my desired trade within the Royal Engineers, um, which if you know all goes to plan will be as an electrician, um, but I know it, that's never a guarantee. Um, but in, regardless, in order to actually even be considered to get my foot in the door, I needed um, a GCSE A to C in Maths, English and one other subject. I've made a video on this before, I'll link it in the description below where I go into a little bit more detail about that kind of journey through college and my application. Um, but for those of you first time tuning in, um, long story short, I need, there's a car just drives past, how inconsiderate. So I need um, a level five minimum in maths. I need uh, a level four minimum in English and a level four minimum in another subject. It's not specific. Um, you would imagine it might be science, irrelevant. I don't have science, yeah. Um, so I needed to go back to college to get, um, to get the grades. And I did that. And this past week here in the UK, um, students from up and down the country have been getting their results at A level and GCSE level and I also have my results. So the first bit of news, um, and it's a bit of good news, is that I got the grades. Yay, go me! Um, so I got a level five in maths, which was the maximum I could get. I was only doing the foundation paper anyway. But the biggest surprise was the fact that I got a level eight in English, which I've been told is the equivalent of an A star in old money. The level four is a, is a C, a grade C. Um, a level five, is, I think is a B, um, or something like that anyway. And anyway, and it goes up, it goes from um, level one, which is um, the lowest, and level nine, which is the highest. And I say I got a level eight in, in English. So a massive surprise when I opened that, uh, those results on a, a Thursday morning just gone. Um, and I'm, I'm over the moon because what that means I'm now full steam ahead with the application there are, but we do need to address and talk about again 
the, the elephant in the room, which is that one other subject. You see, I've been told by the careers office that what they can do is something called shading, where they will take a D, a GCSE grade D, which is what I got universally across the board when I was at school many years ago, and they can, as so long as I've got the maths and the English, which are like the main ones, they can shade up my D to make it a C or a level four in new money. Um, but that's not a guarantee and it's, and they can't make any guarantees. And I guess I won't find out whether or not they'll accept me within a technician's trade uh, in the Royal Engineers until I attend the, uh, the assessment center and I sit down and I actually get to talk to somebody about it. Which brings me on to piece of news number two. I have a date for my assessment center and it's in three weeks. So I have actually known about this for a couple of weeks. Um, the last video I did was the beep test video. Um, and on the day of editing and the video and uploading the video, um, I actually found out that um, I, my, my assessment center date. And I thought, well, the time's gone now. I can't just like splice it into the video just, you know, as an afterthought. So I thought I'd just wait and announce it when I got my GCSE results. Um, and make a video out of it. So that's what I'm doing. So we've got the GCSEs um, minus the, um, the one of the subject. Um, so we're in the lap of the gods in that regard. Uh, and we also have an assessment center date in three weeks from now. So it's not very far in the future. It's actually a reality now. It's, it's soon. Um, but I feel pretty cool about it. I feel conf confident-ish. I don't want to get too arrogant uh, or appear arrogant. Um, uh, but uh, I've been working on my fitness. We saw in the last video when I did a beep test video, I managed to get the level 7.5, which is the minimum requirement needed for the Royal Engineers. I've been working on my fitness since that video um, and feel as if I am uh, fitter and stronger than I was sort of you know, a month ago, for example. Um, I actually intend in the next video or before I attend the assessment centre to do an updated beep test video just to see you know the progress if there is any i think there will be um so yeah so stay tuned for that one and that's basically um what i wanted to um talk to you guys about just to let you know keep you um you know in the loop so to speak of what's happening um what I'm, I'm gonna what i'm gonna say now so there is a chance that i could attend the assessment center and I could go there with a great big beaming smile and go, look, here's my, here's my maths, here's my English, here you go, passed. Um, I could do smash the fitness, breeze through the medical, all that good stuff and shine in the interview. And then it could get to the end of the interview and they could say, um, you've impressed us, X, Y, and Z. However, we need, some, we need you to have that additional qualification, that additional level four in another relevant subject. Um, so on this occasion, blah, 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 we're not gonna, um, we're not gonna sort of offer you a, a job, but we can offer you a job elsewhere. <laughs> um, if that's the case, then I do have a plan B and I'll be, I'm gonna, cards on the table right now, um, guys and girls. Um, if that's the case, then that is end of application for the army. Um, Cause there's no way I could then go back and get um, do another subject at college and then still um, get in the army basically because I'm too old. So if that's the case, if they're not willing to shade up a, one of my uh, other uh, qualifications, that's the end of the application. Um, and as tough as that would be to, uh, you know, a bit of a bitter pill to swallow after the effort I've put in this last year, um, I'll just, it's just one of them things I'll have to take on the chin. And I've been thinking about that more and more and more recently which is why I've come up with a plan B. And the more I think about my plan B, the more I'm thinking of, I actually want it to be my plan A. <laughs> um, but no, but plan B, um, piece of news number three, is um, should I be unsuccessful uh, in joining the Royal Engineers? And but, but, like, let's just go back. Bef the reason why I'm not willing to um, join, join the army um, in another role, okay, so, uh, and there's plenty of roles that interest me, don't get me wrong, you know, something in the Royal Signals or the Remi, um, um, there's, um, there's logistics and stuff like that. You know, there are, there are good trades out there, 
Um, but I kind of made a promise to my family that this adventure, this you know, this uh, little journey of mine, is not a midlife crisis. <laughs> um, it's for a genuine reason, and it's to gain a, a good trade. Okay. Um, i.e. electrician plumbing, something like that. And in order to gain their support and backing, I kind of compromised with them. I said, you know, it's either this or nothing. Um, I, I, you know, I promised them that I wasn't just going to join the army for the sake of joining the army, just because of, that's what I wanted to do. Um, it had to be for a good trade. So that's why if, I did, if they don't offer me a place in the Royal Engineers with a technician's trade, um, which again, it's it's a it's a bit of a lottery. I've I've, I've been told because you can join to with the in, intention or the aspiration of being an electrician, but then they can like actually there's no there's no positions within there's no intake, so you're going to have to do plumbing, which let, let's face it is it's not a bad second second choice, is it? Or, or you know, or a general fitter. That was another one I had my eye on. I quite quite like I like, uh, like the look of. Um, but I have been told that um, most of the time people do get their desired job choices. But that's that's you know di digressing slightly. Um, where was I? Yes, support from the family. Um, so if I, if they turn around and say, look, you know, we're not we can't join the Royal Engineers in this, but we can do signals, or you can join the Royal Engineers, but as a, um, a you know a, a, in one of the tradesman roles or something, you know, or armoured engineer, which I think is a great trade, it's just not what I want to do. I have to walk away from it. So I've been thinking, I'm thinking, oh God, it's taken me a long time just to get to this point. Um, thank you for bearing with me. I appreciate it. I do ramble on. Uh, but there's a lot of information um, and a lot of backstory and things that I feel as if I need to get out there just to give it that like, context, a bit of a wider, a bigger picture for you all to, to see and appreciate. Um, so plan B would be to withdraw the military, the army application, go back to college, the college that I've just spent the last year at, and redo a GCSE in science, um, specifically biology, because that's the only science at GCSE level that the college local to me does. Uh, there is another one actually in that direction, that means nothing to you, but you know, I'm, I, they might do one. I might, you know what, I might look into that. Um, by the by, at the moment, that would be what I'll do. I'll go and I'll do um, a science, biology, physics, chemistry, um, wherever, whatever. Hopefully then, by next year, I'll get that um, level four, level five, that I, or better, um, that I need. And then, I, then essentially I'd have the Holy Trinity, I'd then have the maths, the English, and the science. So what I've decided, if that is the case, um, I would apply to join the Air Force, the Royal Air Force, okay? Um, and like I said moments ago, the more I think about it, this is plan B, but the more I think about it, and I've got it on the screen in front of me right now, um, the more I think, the more I look at it, the more I kind of think this is a better path for me. Um, but I've got the assessment centre date now anyway, and I've been waiting so long for that. So I'm going to attend, I'm going to give it my all and just see what comes of it. Um, but let, let me just, I mean, I appreciate you can't see the screen in front of me, but for uh, an engineering electrician within the, um, within the REF. So in terms of like wage and things like that, um, it's kind of the same as the army. Um, a few a few hundred pound a year difference. Um, the biggest diff the biggest thing though is um, applicants must, okay, this is straight away as you open up the page, applicants must be aged, and this is between the ages of 16 and 47, which means I'm well within that bracket. Now, I don't know if that 47 is for like airmen that like reservist airmen or whether that's full time, but I'm 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 clicked on the full time regular tab here, and it's saying up to the age of forty seven, which gives me so much time um, to um, yeah to gain the qualification. I mean, hopefully I'll only need the year, um, but yeah, you need a GCSE grade C or a grade four. Remember, they are they are the same. Um, 
in English, Maths and Science slash a tech based subject. Um, so science or technology basically. Um, so unlike the army that says and one other subject, the RAF specifically state you need science. It doesn't say which science, which is why I'm thinking the biology would be okay for me to go and do. Um, but yeah, that's, um, that, and, and you, you essentially you'd be on an apprenticeship, a uh, level three engineering technician, um, maintenance technician electrical. Yeah, so a bit of a mouthful. Uh, I'm not going to go through everything, but if you, I mean, please visit the website yourself, read through it, and the stuff that you can do um, is is absolutely mental. Like, and it's like um, you do your basic training, just like you would in the army, and then you go and do your phase two training, um, specialist training, 55 weeks or so over a year's worth of training. Um, you'll be enrolled on an advanced apprenticeship um, and a team of RAF civilian instructors will, t instructors will teach you electrical engineering principles. Uh, and the way I understand it, again, I'm, I'm not familiar with how the RAF operate. I'm going off what's on their website and other videos I've seen on YouTube. But as I believe, you, you whereas the army will be like, right, you're an electrician. That's it, that's your job. The RAF will be like, right, you're an electrical engineer. Um, you will work on this piece of equipment for X amount of time until you get like good at it. You will then, once you're um, an expert on that, you will then go and work on another piece of equipment and another piece of equipment. So you're not just working on aircraft, for instance, you're working on like um, the, the, um, the generators and, and yeah, all the, just basically all the kit, kit and equipment that the RAF have. And honestly, uh, the more I look at it, the more I, I want this. Uh, but of course, it's another year at college. The difference with this, though, would be, um, and I've spoken to my other half about this, be another year older, I then go through all the training, and then, best case scenario, let's say by, by the time, because it's 55 weeks phase two training, so that's a year, um, just shy of three months for basic training. So, so let's, and then the initial application. So let's round that up to a year and a half. A year to do my science, that's two and a half years. So let's just say, best case scenario, two and a half years from now, I'll be 37 and a half. F freshly, newly qualified, touch wood, as an engineering electrician. I said, I've said that the reality is this would be my career. Um, and I would stay in the RAF for the duration, whereas with the army, my plan would be to do five, maybe six years, gain a bit of experience within that trade, and then go back onto Civvy Street and put what I'm, the knowledge I've got from the army into practice um, in the civilian world. But the more I look at this, yeah, the more I'll kind of want it. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, I've got decisions to make. Um, regardless, I'm still going to the assessment centre. Um, second week in September, don't know if I already mentioned that, the actual date itself. Um, so, uh, yeah, I've got plenty of time to get a haircut, uh, have a shave, smart myself up, get a little bit fitter. Next video is going to be a beep test video. Um, in terms of fitness, by the way, these standards for the RAF kind of the same. There's a few differences, but mainly it's the same as the Army. Uh, so, yeah, that's my plan B. Uh, it's always good to have a plan B. It's always good to have a backup. We'll just have to wait and see how it goes. So that's my uh, that's the video for today. It's gone on a lot, a lot longer than I anticipated. I thought this would be a simple five minute video. You know, uh, I've got my grades, got my assessment centre date, and I've got a plan B. That's you know, uh, but I do like to um, I do like to waffle on a bit. You may have, you may have twigged and guessed that already. Uh, so all that remains for me to say is um, thanks as always for watching. Uh, links in the description below for um, my social media because um, if you follow me on Twitter and I get enough people following me on Twitter, make yourself known to me that you're following as a result of the, the army stuff. Um, and then I can kind of give live updates of the assessment center when I'm there. Um, so the link will be in the description below. If you go on to the actual main channel on the channel banner, I think in the bottom right, there should be a hyperlink that takes you directly to Twitter as well. Um, so yeah, follow us. I, I tend to follow back as well. And um, yeah, 
until next time. Thanks as always for watching. You've been awesome. I've been about average. Toodaloo.